This video will be about the 2019 Sotheby's Art Exhibition and uh, at the first half of the video I will um, pick some of the artworks I, and artists to talk about and towards the second half of the video it would um, show some of the videos I took and pictures I took of the exhibition. This is the first painting I saw when I entered the gallery and this painting is painted by Liu Ye, a contemporary Chinese artist. Liu Ye is one of the most well-known artists in Chinese um, contemporary art and I especially like his style and the use of colors of his works. Uh, the main color of this piece is red including the subject and background and so on and the piece mainly cons uh, consists of a red background and a sun with a girl and trees. This type of tree is called Song in Chinese and it reminds me of the Song in the Huangshan Mountain. It's a very famous um, place in China. The red sun and the trees in this painting, like most of Liu Ye's other paintings, are implications of Chinese culture at a specific time. And since Liu Ye was born during the Chinese Revolution, his education had great impact on his works, like the emphasis of co the color red, for example. Many of his works actually contain some of the reflections of his time, including the red sun, like the color red specifically, as it reminds the audiences of the oriental red or the chi uh, chairman Mao. Although he does not directly point out the content, but it would be implied in his works. Liu Ye also made a more cartoon depiction of the little girl in the painting. You can see that the structure, shape, and the girl's style, including her dress, are actually quite similar to the clothing style in China during the 60s and 70s. Liu Ye's cartoonish depiction on her gives a sense of leisure and humor, but at the same time it also includes subtle political metaphors with some cultural elements. The second painting is by Zhang Xiaogang. He is also one of the most known Chinese contemporary artists. The style of most of his paintings are cynical realism containing, again, some political metaphors. In fact, if you look at his works, you can relate them back to the old family photos taken in the 1950s and 1960s in China. Most paintings contain a family, maybe with three, four, or even up to five subjects. Then in his works, we can see from, the paint, uh, from this painting that the expressions of all subjects are similar or just the same. This is also a realistic representation of that time period. When you look at real pictures taken from families during the 50s and 60s, including the family portraits, they are all similar to this structure, like the way they stand shown in the painting and the type of expression they have. Zhang Xiaogang uses the life and state of the families in China at that time period as reference material for his works. The state of society and politics is subtly portrayed in his works, for instance, how everyone is dressed similarly. Now back to this painting, the male subject in the piece should be the father and then the little girl on the left would be the daughter. And you can see that a strand of light hits from the father's face through to the girl's face. This light could be read as a sign of hope or an implication for growth, but the child's face is painted completely red. This red may symbolize the Chinese children in that era who are seen as flowers of their motherland and their red successors. In many of Zhang Xiaogang's works, the main tone is gray, which generally gives people a feeling of repression and depression. And the fact that the subjects in his paintings have the same expressionless face emphasizes the tone of his works. Similar to Liu Ye, Zhang Xiaogang's works also contain some political implications of the 1900s in China, but his style is more contemporary. This is another piece by Zhang Xiaogang, and the composition of this painting is most representative of his style. As we interpret this work, we can tell the similarities with the previous piece. We can see that this is a family of five uh, uh, with a younger baby. And notice how he is only painting the youngest baby with red, showing that he is Mm, he is the best hope of the whole family and the red successor. And 
but red also symbolizes the mm, tra uh, Chinese tradition and the red politics during the 1900s. And the whole entire family is wearing the traditional clothes in that era, like what everyone generally wears in that time period. And I think the atmosphere that's portrayed in this piece is also depressing because even the baby's face is stoic. There, you, you don't see any happiness. And the tone of this piece is also like, it gives you a gloomy, gloomy and gray tone. The bright red used, it creates a very strong visual impact and it contrasts with the rest of the piece. And it also makes me think of the blood when I look at this. In most of his works, I think he, um, Zhang Xiaogang mostly criticizes how the society during that era had strict rules they ha uh, the people had to follow and they had to act a certain way and believe in certain things. And I think that's what he's trying to portray with the whole gray atmosphere and everyone having the same expression. This piece is by an artist named Zhang Huan, who graduated from the Department of Arts in Henan University, major in oil painting. But later, he turned to performance art, a more direct way to interact with the real world with art. For instance, he walked the streets covered with raw meat slices, as if they were his own body muscles. He is not traditional. He, he rarely created art in the form of painting. And to complete this work shown in the exhibition, he told three calligraphers to take three days to write something on the subject's face as Zhang Huan took pictures. What they wrote was Chinese, traditional Chinese idioms he heard when he was a child, and they continued to write them until finally the subject's entire face is covered and turned black. And the point uh, behind this piece might be to recognize that the the over-accumulation of culture and having the loss of self-identity as a result, since in the end of the picture he is unable to identify the person or the contents that were written. His artworks are able to evoke thought within the audience as he expresses his own ideas. These statues are all works of Yue Jun. He and Liu Xiaogang are both representatives of contemporary art after the 1980s. He is known for his style. Notice how all the characters have the same face and expression, like they don't care about anything. And there were young people in Beijing at that time period around the late 1900s, and they had nothing to do and lived like hippies. What he tries to portray in his works are the state of that era. Uh, other than sculptures, he also created large amounts of oil paintings, and this figure is used in most of his works. You could say this character acts as a template and represents his style. Another reason why he chose to have one single figure and expression for all his characters is probably to emphasize the sameness of Chinese people in that time period. This is one of his paintings, and you can see that the character is the same with the same arrangement and the same face. Then the man in front holds a picture that is of a foreigner with a red scarf and a hat. In fact, this is a very famous picture of a work by a Western Impressionist painter. At that time, poster design began to prevail in Europe, so he integrated the Western works with the unemployed young people in Beijing during the 1980s when they were just opened to the outside world. There is a sense of conflict in this piece, a cultural conflict of the Chinese and Western culture, and a state of collision is represented in this work. The work on the left is by Zeng Fanzhi, who graduated from Hubei Academy of Fine Arts. His works are also critical. The student in his painting uh, wears a red scarf, and he is also reading but the face shows that he is wearing a mask. And his posture portrays an idea that he does not enjoy the atmosphere of the school. This may be a representation of the artist's own experience. He dropped out of school at the age of 16 because he could not fit in with the school system at that time. He started to work at a very young age, and his father, a printing factory worker, arranged for him that he also worked at the printing factory, but he didn't do it for long because he was not interested. 
At that time, he met one of his friends who was preparing for the examination for art academy. Zheng Fanzhi did not know how to paint at all, but his friend taught him for a while, and he fell in love with art. So he began to learn with his friend slowly and took the entrance examination to the Academy of Fine Arts. It took him many years to get in, but he was finally able to learn art formally. After he entered the art school, he actually did not match with the education system of the art school at that time because the Chinese art education was mainly influenced by the Soviet Union, and what they wanted was realism, unlike the Western expressionism or etc. Um, however, Zheng Fanzhi liked exaggeration and seeking seeking innovation and difference. Although he continued to express himself, it was not accepted by the teachers in the school. But he didn't give up because of this. He still insisted to create his own works. His style is represented in the painting on the left, where the subject has a large head with an expression of fear and anxiety portrayed on a mask. His works act as a kind of criticism of his time. Even though his paintings are more cartoon-like with the vivid colors and energy, his paintings are still able to portray an atmosphere of heaviness and depression. Uh, notice the red scarf worn by the student. All students wear that in China, and it acts as a symbolization of the successor of society. But with the combination of the mask, it implies his criticism that they are all wearing masks and are unable to be themselves. The piece next to this painting is the green dog, and it's by Zhou Chunya, and he is very well known for painting green dogs. Zhou Chunya has painted a lot of works with green dogs, uh, over a dozen of them, and. I think this is one of his ways to express his feelings because in the beginning he used realistic colors of dogs to paint them, but later he started to use bright, vivid green, and the use of green made his paintings seem surreal and stimulating and peaceful. The visual effect forms a strong visual impact, and his strokes are also very free and uncontrolled as he uses big brushes. And even the paint flows down from the canvas. His paintings have strong expressiveness, while he does not depict details. This artist is called Yoshitomo Nara from Japan, and his works are frequently appeared in many places. He is actually quite commercial because a lot of logos, businesses, and even T-shirts, T-shirts, will be printed with his works. His works are also created from the roots of Japan, Japanese culture and anime. The Japanese anime culture is so developed, so it's common for contemporary artists to gain ideas from it. Most of his paintings are of a little girl with a big head, big eyes, and a small body. His characters are cute, but they can be portrayed with expressions as if they had bad intentions. Or complex emotions. In his works, we can see that the strokes are very smooth, and the lines and surfaces in his works, including the color and soft light of the characters, make his characters feel naive and childish. But in some of his pieces, like this one shown in the video, he enjoys adding a meticulous expression through the character's eyes and the the weapon hidden behind her, and it, So on. This contrasts with their innocent look and his style of painting, creating a strong sense of contrast. I personally like his works very much. This is the work of another Japanese artist called Shiroishi Kazuo. This is an abstract painting, and in fact, his works are combinations of painting and performance art. In the 1940s and 1950s, there was a trend of Western art called action painting. Artists will take these large pens or buckets of paints, and uh, and they will go on the canvas and swing and draw while also walking on the canvas. And this is what this artist does. He moves around and shakes his body when painting, and he doesn't have much intention. He just creates his works with his subconsciousness. He uses Heavy paints like oil paint and materials like even drinks like soda, and they would pour them onto the canvas in large quantities. And he would roll or walk on the canvas to create a 
incentive and random effect. His works may deliver a strong visual impact due to the thick paints and strong strokes with a variety of colors. In this gallery, there was a whole there was a whole small part of the gallery dedicated to Cos, and it was very interesting. Um, Cos is an artist that is very well known and popular right now, and even in realms unrelated to art. Um, and the artist's name uh, was apparently created when he was in middle school, I think. And after graduation, he went to sev several big anime companies, animation companies, like Disney to do animation. We can see that his works are actually have elements of American animation, like symptoms and uh, characters in his pieces uh, shown later in a picture. It was a really big piece. Uh, uh, the main signature of his works are the distinct big crosses as eyes and the ear-like flaps or probably hair next to the head. And when you see this, it's really easy to recognize his style. And he often collaborates with businesses creating not only 2D works but also 3D works like huge sculptures or toys from shoes to clothes. And for instance, the collaboration between Cos and Uniqlo was very successful. And in this exhibition, there was um, there was sculptures. There was a big one, I think. And then there were there was a small gallery shown in the video here, and the big painting shown right now. This is Ling Fengmian's work, and he is a famous artist of modern Chinese art. And it's easy to tell his paintings apart from others mm, because of his style, uh, which I also really like. And he studied in France in the early 1920s and 1930s. He studied also modern art in the West for many years. He was influenced by artists of the West, especially the style Impressionism and Cubism. In his pieces, he chooses to depict Eastern things. For example, the subject in this painting is a Chinese woman. And the style is more conservative, conservative like Eastern idealism but she is naked, um, showing the Western impact factor in the piece, including his line strokes are more elegant, soft, and virtual, delivering a soft feeling that is very comfortable and relaxing instead of creating strong visual impact. Uh, from here on on, it would be pictures and videos of other pieces of the exhibition.